Um, hi, I'm Jemima Foxtrot and I am the writer and performer of Melody. I'm Lucy Allen and I'm the co-writer, co-divisor and director of Melody. <laughs> Melody's going to be on um, tomorrow night, that's Thursday the 28th of May um, as part of Clapham Omnibus's Engine Room which um, has works in progress um, from a couple of emerging artists so that's us come on give us <laughs> um, it's a one woman show um, spoken word piece um, semi autobiographical show that explores the way that music attaches itself to places people and memories um, it's a kind of, it's, it's a walk home um, and the noises that Jemima hears and the kind of, the stimulus of the, of the world uh, provoke these kind of memories and contemplations as we go. Um, I got into performance poetry really because I loved writing and I, I used to work as an actor which I didn't find um, very fulfilling really because I didn't find um, I had much scope to be creative and write my own work. Um, I do quite a lot of singing in my poetry and that's something I really, really enjoy and always have enjoyed singing. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to sort of um, blend those two worlds and be able to be in charge of what I performed, really. I try not to be didactic with my work, so I don't like to tell people what to think. Um, rather I try to show different sides of problems and I think in most of my stuff's relatively personal semi-confessional and I think there's politics everywhere I think um, in everyday life and the everyday problems we come across sort of everything is political um, so I, I think I think performance poetry can um, change the way people think, um, but I think it needs to do that by um, helping people explore issues for themselves rather than by telling them what to do. So that's what I sort of try to do by making my work political. Um, I think there's a huge link between poetry and music. I think the rhythms and sounds you find in poetry are musical. It's my favourite thing about poetry, really, the sounds and the rhythms and the musicality. Um, so I think that they really lend themselves to each other very well and, and the blend works well because they're kind of essentially the same thing. One of my biggest influences is um, Bob Dylan, who I've loved since I was a child, and he is a musician with some very, very poetic lyrics. I think, to, to, to add to that briefly, that what I really like about Jemima as a performer, as a poet, is that on the sort of scale of, of spoken word, which I think sort of goes from rap at one end to something that I think Jemima does, which to me is kind of reminiscent of folklore, stories, melodies kind of passed down through generations. There's a kind of great sort of history and lineage and it's much more connected to kind of folk tales and music and folk kind of song um, than it is to the sort of rap kind of end of spoken word which is something that I think is so compelling about Jemima's work because it's quite unusual. I guess you could talk about some of the music that's in the... Okay so the, I find myself often influenced by musicians I would say rather than poets um, I know a fair bit about poetry and I'm interested in, in, in some poets, but I get a lot of my inspiration from music. I love funk and soul music, particularly uh, with female singers I'm really into. Um, I like Joanna Newsom, she appears in the show. Um, Bob Dylan appears in the show. <laughs> Not literally. No, <laughs> if Most only. expensive cameos of all time. <laughs> um, yeah, so music, soul, funk and folk, probably. Traditional folk songs, I have play, have a big influence on me, I would say, as well. And my dad. Yeah. His music appears in the show. His music, so my dad's a composer, so his music, 
he was the one who got me to Bob Dylan, but he, yeah. Yeah. And he writes some pretty wacky stuff. He so. does. <laughs> he does indeed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I tend to get less nervous nowadays when I'm sort of doing normal sort of spoken word gigs. Um, but I do get nervous still, yeah. It's quite terrifying sort of exposing yourself, especially when quite a lot of your work is quite personal. Mm. I find that quite like, oh, so, and, you know, maybe I shouldn't say this, some of it is dramatised, you know, it's all, not all completely true, but you're trying to convince them that it is. So it feels a bit like sometimes like you're putting your soul on the line yeah. and also you need to not mess up and forget your words. So I do get nervous, yeah, basically. How do you deal with it? How do I deal with it? Um, Lucy actually told me a good thing. So she said that you should sort of try and tr just translate your nervousness into excitement. So this is something we've been working on, you know. Really hard. We've been working really hard full time for three days, and before we've been working for weeks before that, and it's like all coming together at this one thing, and it's terrifying. But actually, fear and excitement are sort of the same thing. They're just sort of different ways of thinking about. That's it. That's something brilliant that I heard an actor saying on the radio that the physiological process of nerves, like heart rate increasing, pupils dilating, starting to sweat, butterflies are identical to the feeling of like excitement and looking forward to something. So if you start using language like, I'm really excited about this gig tonight, <laughs> rather than I'm really nervous, it yeah. translates from something negative, which makes you kind of shut down, to something positive, which makes you kind of open. And it's very, very effective in any situation. Uh, yeah, I find that really helpful. And also what you, the other thing we said about when you're actually performing, because something that nerves do is they make you speed up. And then you go, blah, 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 say everything fast. And in the spoken word show, when it's so sort of poetry heavy and word heavy, you really don't want to speed up because people aren't going to find what you're saying. So I really try and take my time to sort of counteract that freaky adrenaline. Mm. <laughs> oh, during a gig? <laughs> last night. Oh, God, last <laughs> night I had... Last night I had definitely the most challenging gig I've ever had, um, which I think is it's always like a rite of passage, really. Well, three things happened. First of all, I couldn't take the mic off the stand because it was, like, taped on, and I always... I like to move around the stage a lot, so I like to take the mic off. The main thing was that there were only about 20 people there, and about 14 or 16 of them were children, and almost... All of my poetry either has swearing in it or some sort of adult content. So, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was like, ah, shit! What poems do I have that don't have swearing in that are suitable for an audience of mainly under 10s? It's a bit weird. And none of them were obviously that interested because they're all about, like, what it's like to be a woman in a capitalist society. And they're all like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so that was weird. And then um, one of the few adults there started... Um, like crying really badly and having some sort of a fit in the middle of a poem. It's not very funny. It's horrible. <laughs> but it is funny. Um, also, in rehearsal yesterday, I stabbed myself in the thumb really hard with a pen, and I had to be in the accident book, didn't I? Yes. In a play with hardly any set, no props, one actor. But you managed. I've to be... managed to injure myself, so I'm obviously a bit of a liability. God, this makes me feel like I'm famous. <laughs> How did you get it right? Don't um, put that in. Mm, <laughs> don't put that in. Don't put that in too. Um, How did I get involved with women who spit? Basically, someone from the BBC just emailed me. Um, and they... Um, it's a really great project they were doing. They, it was part of this thing called Youth um, Takeover Day. And... Um, they had actually worked quite closely with someone on work experience there who's a sort of 23-year-old woman who's really into um, spoken word poetry and she just emailed me and sort of said, oh, I might be in touch again soon, it's very exciting and obviously the whole experience has been wonderful. So they just sort of got picked off the internet, I think, but she said that she'd just come across my website, you know, she didn't know, she just was searching spoken word artists and came across me and then I was very fortunate really to be picked as one of the five people 
So after the Scratch performance tomorrow night at Clapham um, Omnibus, we're taking the show to Buxton Fringe for a few days towards the end of the festival, which we're really excited about. A lovely space, but of a church. And then after that, we're going to Edinburgh. And um, we're part of the Free Fringe in a brand new venue that's not been part of the festival before. Uh, Clark's Bar, it's called. So we're there for the full run of the festival. Um, and after that, we're really hoping to, at some point, have a kind of small regional tour. We've both got links in the northwest, so um, so there's, there's plans in the pipeline for a tour. I can't think of anyone. I can't think of anyone <laughs> who's ever been nice to us. Uh, we... we Thank you to our great friend James Horrocks who um, came in and helped us yesterday, told us which bits were confusing and have led to some drastic script edits, which I think are going to be really useful. And But mainly... Don't give him too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> too much credit. Main thanks goes to Clapham on the Bus. Yeah. For giving us this really amazing space for three whole days, which obviously... Space is usually hard to come by and expensive, and they are being really nice. They gave me a plaster for my thumb, and um, yeah, ma mainly thanks to you guys. <laughs>